Hey guys, Jared from Parker Mountain Machine. Here today we're uh, going to be doing an installation video for all the PMM JTTCs. For the installation video, the example of the comp that we're going to be using is a Gen 3 Glock comp. Laid out in front of me, what we have is the basic tools needed for the PMM JTTC comp installation. And this carries over for any of the compensators that we make. Glock, HK, SIG, so on and so forth. General spanner wrench or adjustable wrench is fine. With your compensator, what you're going to get is a kit of shims, three ten thousandths, three five, and three two thousandths shims, and then there's a small vial of rock set in there as well. For installation purposes today, I'm going to use our own in house rock set, not the vial. We'll save this for a customer. Additionally, what we have here is a set of soft jaws that we use in our vise. You can get these off of Amazon really cheap. I highly recommend them. If you're a gun owner, they come in super handy. They're aluminum and what we did here is we took just some soft pieces of leather and uh, spray adhesive them to the actual jaws and this really really helps the installation of any critical components that you want to maintain the cosmetic appeal of. That way it doesn't mar up the compensator. Last but not least, we have a small vise over here. I think I purchased this one at Lowe's for maybe 20 or 25 bucks. Once again, if you own a gun and you do not have a vise, stop this video and go buy a goddamn vise. Every gun owner should have a vise. They're a critical tool to working on any weapon system that you have. So first thing I'd like to talk about is barrel compatibility for the PMM JTTC. In the beginning, we um, were trying to recommend customers as to which barrels to buy. So we'll go over this just real quickly here. This is a Gen 4 Glock 17. This uses our new JTTC with a silencer co-barrel. Silencer co-barrels with the 17s and the 19s are generally fine. Good to go for the box as well. This Glock 19 here has a PMM barrel in it now, stainless PMM barrel. We make these barrels in black nitrate finish or raw stainless and they will work on any Glock 19 from Gen 1 up to the new Gen 5's, meaning the 19X or the Glock 45. It's a direct fit, it drops right in, the fitment's perfect, so there's no questioning as to which barrels work. At this point moving forward, PMM is just going to recommend our barrels for all our compensators because of all the different variances in barrel manufacturers for the Glocks pistols. Here on the end we've got a uh, Glock 45 Gen 5 pistol and this currently has mounted to it our dual port compensators. Barrels are in production right now for this setup. It'll be a PMM barrel just like all the other offerings that we have right now for the Glock Gen 1 through Gen 5's so you'll purchase a compensator and a barrel package for this application. So here we have our early Gen 3 Glock slide with some cuts in it that we did five or six years ago. This slide is using an earlier Zev Technologies Glock 17 threaded barrel. This is a perfect to spec barrel for the Glock 17 so for installation purposes we're going to be using this today. First and foremost what you need to do is obviously take the slide off of the frame of whatever pistol that you're using. Like I said this installation process carries over whether it be a Glock or any other application that we make for the PMM JTTC. With the slide removed from your host system first thing you're going to do is remove the recoil spring assembly. With the threaded barrel that you have, what we need to initially do is thread the compensator on to the barrel and try and determine where our indexing is going to uh, set up with the compensator. So right now just by looking at this I can tell that this is overclocked. So if I go to the 12 o'clock position I'd like to try and slide the barrel into battery and I can see that it's not locking fully into battery which leads me to believe that the comp has to be shimmed out a little bit. So what I do is I push the barrel back forward. I'm going to rotate it half a turn. 
slide it back in. So the barrel is now locked up on the breech face as well as the front of the hood. This is what you're looking for and then you use this as a reference point as to where the comp should sit on your pistol. The gap between the uh, spring box and the front of the slide and the back of the compensator is going to vary slightly from application to application but generally speaking you're looking for a tight as gap as, uh, as possible. In this application with this Zev barrel we're using approximately six ten thousandths thick shims. You said this barrel varies a little bit it's an earlier barrel. But what we're going to do now is we're looking for that pretension at that 10 or 15 degree position in relation to your 12 o'clock. So lightly threading this on by hand. This is a, a little under rotated. Generally I'd want this corner of the compensator lined up perfectly with the 12 o'clock position on here. So if you have an under rotated positioning like this we're looking for the comp to actually sit like that while it's under tension with the shims. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take, uh, take this off and I'm going to remove one of the 10,000 shims and I'm going to replace it with a 5,000 shim. So I went ahead and I swapped out our 10,000 shim to a 5,000 and under light tension with my fingers I now have what would be the left side of the compensator, the non-ejection port side of the compensator at a 12 o'clock position in reference to your front sight. That's exactly what we're looking for here prior to putting the JTTC into the vise with your pistol slide and then tightening it down. I'd like to touch on something real quickly here when we're talking about the relation of the compensator to your 12 o'clock position. Generally speaking, we're looking for something that's as close to the left side, the non-ejection port side of the compensator, to be lined up with the 12 o'clock position with your front side post. Can the comp be this way? Absolutely. Can it be this way? Absolutely. We're looking for just a little bit of pretension on the comp with the shim stack, so when you mount it into the vise, you can tighten it down. You can never over tighten these but they can definitely be under tightened. If they're under tightened and the rock set isn't used you run the risk of it coming loose. I say risk because it's just a risk. It doesn't mean that it's going to induce a malfunction or a failure. That's part of the design features that we implemented into our compensators where it engages the spring box. Even if we were to install this like this on the pistol right now when the pistol recoils the spring engages inside the spring box here and it'll stop it from coming uh, untimed or unclocked I should say. Now that we've determined the pretension using the sh supplied shims we're going to apply a little bit of rock set to the threads on the barrel. That's plenty and I personally just put a little dollop of rock set actually on the threads on the compensator itself as well. I'm going to go ahead and thread this on and mount it in the vise. So I've taken the PMM JTTC and I've mounted it in the jaws, or the soft jaws with a piece of leather in between them, as you can see here. We have the slide and the barrel free floating in here right now as well. You can see that I can actually still rotate it. What you can do now is you can get the slide as close to the back of the compensator so the breech block is sitting in the guide channel with the slide and tighten it by hand as much as you possibly can. Once it's tightened by hand you want to keep the slide close to your soft jaws. You take your adjustable wrench and make sure that it's engaged on the flats of your barrel with your breech block and try and get as much engagement as you can with your wrench. So if you can get the tip of the wrench all the way down to the hood of the barrel that's ideal because you're going to have more surface area of engagement for your wrench on both sides of the barrel. With that there, I'm going to simply start to turn the barrel and the compensator until we achieve our alignment. 
Now I can tell by looking at it right now that it's not clocked properly. So take that off a teeny bit more. Index it some more. Still needs to go a tad more. That looks pretty good. Now that we've got the compensator mounted, we're using the soft jaws. The last thing that I like to do is engage it and then you put the recoil spring back in because what the recoil spring is going to do is it puts the barrel under tension to the slide and that will really tell you whether or not the comp is indexed correctly in relation to the spring box on the slide. Now you can have a little bit of deflection off your center line. It's not going to hurt anything, but if you're looking for it to be perfect, this is the best way to determine that because it's going to be sitting in the pistol just like this with the barrel under spring tension from your recoil spring. Once you're satisfied with the PMM JTTC orientation in relation to your slide, install the recoil spring take the slide comp, install it back on the pistol and do a function test. Naturally with this we want to verify that under recoil that the spring box is not contacting any portion of the dust cover trying to avoid this uh, when the weapon system is articulating. Like I said, the way that we went and designed these compensators, even under recoil, if this does come loose, you can see that the spring box engages the dust cover, so it can only clock out so much, as well as the recoil spring rod engages the bottom of the compensator here. So this theoretically, or it's not even theoretically, it physically cannot come unclocked when it goes back into battery with all our modern design compensators that have the slight wings they wrap around the slide and that also helps keep them indexed perfectly so in closing guys I just wanted to touch on the orientation process of all the PMM JTTC's it can in some instances be an arduous task just be patient take your time with it and try and really achieve the perfect uh, orientation utilizing the rock set. Uh, and when you do achieve the proper orientation utilizing both the rock set and a proper shim stack on the compensator, you're going to find that under sustained volleys of fire where all the other compensators on the market have a tendency of coming loose, you're not going to run into that issue with our system. These are based off of muzzle device technology that's been proven on rifles for you know, 50, 60 years, probably even longer than that at this point. Uh, so we just applied it to pistols. So just be real, real patient during the installation process using the shim stacks that are supplied with the comp. If your particular barrel doesn't have enough shims to achieve the desired orientation, we have additional shims that you can buy on the website. That is a very critical component. You absolutely have to make sure that the compensator is under compression load or pretension load prior to clocking it on in the vise using the soft jaws. The tension that is generated between the compensator and the shoulder of the barrel helps mitigate any thermal expansion properties that you're going to see under sustained volleys of fire with the pistol. We're using a 7075 aluminum compensator and the barrel is steel so they have different thermal expansion properties between the two. But once installed properly, as I said, using the shims and the rock set, this is a proven system that will uh, last you a lifetime if not longer.